Alexandra, you had this fantastic tweet, a survey, a poll that you sent out. 7,000 people uh, answered it. Alexandra, your reach is fantastic. Anything that's over 5,000 to me looks like it's a decent poll. You asked the question, what will have a significant impact on Tesla's financial results first? So which of these businesses is going to have the most impact to te Tesla's financials first? FSD version 12, RoboTaxi, Optimus, $25,000 car. And I know you wanted to ask Add Energy, but they don't let you have a fifth option. Yeah. Why don't you just tell us what made you decide to post this poll? And the answer shocked me. It's crazy. And we can me talk too. about this. It's crazy. Me, me okay. And uh, thank you for pulling that one up because it was really interesting. So when I wrote this, actually, I, the, the question was initially different. I mean, sometimes I can sit on a post for half a day until I have it right for a couple of, <laughs> of letters, right? What? It's crazy. Sometimes I just throw them out, especially when I'm aggressive mood, but this one I wanted to get right. So the, the initial idea was which of these products will we see first, right? And then I thought, no, that doesn't right. really matter because, I mean, version 12 can come tomorrow, but when will version 12 have a significant impact on the financials? That, you know, so it, it was really important for me that people thought it through, not only, you know, will we see an Optimus bot, but will we also have a financial impact from it? Because the Optimus bot could really lower cost of goods, right? And the running costs of the company. And so there's so many aspects to it. So I, I wanted to, to think it through myself and I wanted to think it through by the people who follow. And there were loads of comments on there. And one of the comments initially straight away was energy. And I said immediately, yeah, I wish I could have put energy there, but energy already has a same impact. And if I would have put energy there, it would be 99% energy because everybody knows and sees energy coming out, right? So when I had to decide which of the five I took out, I thought if I put energy, nobody will really even bother with the other options. So there was no energy, which I do believe is the biggest grower in the next couple of quarters. And then I do believe that people just have so much more problems understanding um, software as a service because V12, Robotaxi, and Optimus is obviously much more a game on software than it is on hardware. While everybody can understand very easily what a $25,000 Tesla will do worldwide, Asia and Europe and, and in, in the Americas. So I do believe the gut feeling or the, the understanding of if I see this car, I would order it straight away is so much more natural to everybody than thinking, oh my God, there could be this bot that's building cars or that is cleaning my house or doing my ironing or version 12 will now be so good that the adoption rate will increase. And it will not only be in the United States, it will be in, in Canada, it will also be in China, it will also be in Europe. And the authorities will finally allow robotaxis in these different countries. So I think for all the software linked answers, the first three, the belief and the, the reality are still so unnatural. I think that's the best word I, I find or so out in the future that it's much easier to imagine a $25,000 car. Yet, I think we all agree that this car, probably 2025, while the other three could very well be 2024. I was going to criticize your question, Alexander, and say that it just really depends on time horizon. Because if you're short-term thinking like Wall Street bets, I'm not going to name any Wall Street bets. Like Wall Street, I'm not going to name any names, but short-term, the cars are... are uh, a discussion, but aren't they really priced in to what the market expects? How do you get a forward PE of 80 here with a $25,000 car? So Yeah, but I, you see, I, my I question was not what is the stock price going to do? My question was when will we see money in the financial results? When will the money be there? And I think there's where people just feel the car is a safer bet to see the financial result in the balance sheet and gotcha. in Gotcha. Well, Fair why point. don't we go through yeah. the the panel here, right? Because obviously this is not my answer. $25,000 car won't appear in financial results until 2026. <clears throat> I believe that FSD version 12 will appear, but it's true that, you know, the uptake will increase, but people might do the $200 per month. So it's going to be a big deal, but it's going to go global. So this will impact the financial results. Is it significant? I'm not so sure. 
RoboTaxi to me is many years away, even though FSD will be available. I think Optimus is going to have an impact, but it won't be sold. And so it won't be revenue, but it could have a gross margin impact to the building of the cars. It may not be 2024, but possibly even before the $25,000 car. And then, of course, energy is, like you said, definitely in there. So let's go down the panel here. Kristen, what's your what's your answer to this question? I think it's a great question. Just looking at these, the FSD 12, I mean, when we look at what is more likely to be churning out quicker, I think FSD 12 is going to happen faster than all of those things. I think you are right about the $25,000 car. I don't, I mean, I think we're going to be lucky if we see it towards the end of next year um, unveiling. And I think 2025, hopefully that the line's all up and it actually will start shipping as far as the other two, I'm thinking in my mind what were they you had the you had the Optimus and what was the other one? I can't remember. Right Robo taxi. Robo the Robo Taxi. The thing is like I think the FSD twelve needs to ship before we even see the Robo Taxi go out. And as far as Optimus, I think there is a lot more sandbagging going on there. And I mean I guess it's debatable if we think it's gonna be sold. It's just the demand. Where's the demand in all of these? So I think the twenty five thousand dollar car, obviously when it ships is gonna be a high demand, but I think FSD twelve probably be the most highest demand in my opinion. Jeff? Yeah, it's a great question. I look at the $25,000 card differently. I do think, by the way, I do think FSD V12 will have to go through a number of iterations before it's something that is, you know, wildly useful. But I think that's what they will go geographically wide beyond the U.S. And, and that, I think, will have fairly significant impact to the bottom line when Europe and China and other regions you know, have the ability to buy the full self-driving package and use it as a driver assist feature. On the $25,000 car, the question, this is where I go back to the question, which is like, which will have, what's going to have, you know, impact the financial results. The, uh, and if you've heard me talk about this, the $25,000 car is already having an impact on the financial results because they're in, you know, detailed design now and they're selecting suppliers. And there's suppliers right now that are in a massive bake-off trying to figure out if they can get a part on the $25,000 car. Let's think about the $25,000 car in magnitude. It's going to be equivalent, if not two times, the amount of volume of the current car portfolio. So right now, today, the hottest award in the industry is to get award on the Tesla Model Y. You get one part in the Tesla Model Y, you have the greatest volume in all of the auto industry in the world. So if you take that now and you say you're going to multiply that by three or by five in a couple of years, that's only, you need time as a supplier to, to build your factory, to put, to install the capacity, to do the planning, to hire the people. So right now, I believe the $25,000 car is influencing the economic performance of what Tesla is paying for Model Y parts, for Model 3 parts, and so on. So I think it, I do actually think that that is actually having economic impact now. And of course, in terms of sales, it won't have more meaningful impact probably till 2025 at some point. And then it'll probably take a couple of years to get the scale. But I think that car will actually have an interesting different launch. It's not going to launch and trickle out with a few cars like we're doing with the Cybertruck. That'll be one where, you know, maybe there's an unveiling, but they're going to be building that car and have many tens of thousands of those ready to go and put into inventory. And the, before you, they say you can start ordering this thing. And the reason is you don't want a car that at that value where you've got to wait, you know, six months for it. It just won't work uh, for people. So anyway, long story short, it's to me, it's really close between V12 and really the economic impact that the $25,000 car has today on Tesla's current suppliers and current capital partners. So you would have chosen twenty five thousand dollar car for an ounce. I think it's a. I think it's a. I think it's a tie. I think they're both happening. They'll both happen concurrently in the next six months, where you'll start seeing more signups in FSD with V twelve, and you're seeing suppliers right now literally, you know, fighting each other to try to get business Tesla business and get an award on the twenty five thousand dollar car. Yeah, and I actually think the third point, meaning Optimus getting net margins down because you know they will slow down recruitment because Optimus is going to do things that the new recruits would have to do which will help net margin i think that could actually all it could all happen at the same time i was asked this week when i think you know when we can really comfortably predict a, a stock price over 500 dollars 
and I said 2026 <laughs> because I, I really believe that's the year when everything comes together. Whatever business line you're currently looking at, it seems to be operational and profitable by 2026. Alexander. I'm not saying it won't happen before, but 2026 is a sure bet. Do you guys know uh, that I get hit high. with I get hit with comments, people thinking that I'm the bull, like I'm like over bullish and I don't give any stock predictions. I don't have any, you know, predictions for how many cars are going to be made by 2024. You say these things, but they always point at me. Jeff says things that are crazy and they point at me going, "What?" <laughs> I'm what did I say that's crazy? Over bullish Jeff uh, never you said, said anything crazy. Well, okay, wait. You said just a couple of shows ago, maybe just last show, you said there's going to be a partnership announced for FSD. You thought it was going to happen before this year. And I'm like, I'm not going to say that, but you did. You feel very comfortable with that statement. I'm, I, yeah. I believe there's going to be licensing. And that's bullish. That's a very bullish statement. I don't say these things. Well, when, this, <laughs> when the CEO says he's in conversation with a tier one partner in July, it's reasonable to think that within six to nine months that that may happen. I agreed with you, but it's I don't say it. <laughs> I don't think it's crazy either, but I'm just saying I get hit. There's Alexander say on $500 of stock. I'm like, okay, it's pretty good. By 2026. I mean, agreed. I, I agree. I would put the house on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not financial advice. Not Does financial. the boomer pop and know that? No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh right my now. gosh. Okay, well, let's ask that question. Which is going to have the greatest impact catalyst-wise to the stock of those list of five, right? Energy, bot, FSD, robot, robotaxi. And for me, I think it's the bot. So, so the market is forward-looking and it just needs to show people that it's inevitable and it's going to come. I don't need, I don't think that the bot needs to show bottom line revenue. Like I'm selling it to other companies. I'm selling it to, you know, consumers before investors will go, this is a big market. I'm going to start investing in Tesla now. I think that's the one that has the greatest uh, potential for boosting the stock. Even just like one more demo video away, maybe, you know, you might say you need at least a couple thousand bots out there showing that it's working, whatever milestone, but it's, it has the most potential. Uh, what, anybody else has any thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I mean, what with, about uh, what about energy? No, right. energy is built in. I agree with that statement. Somebody told me that. I asked the same question. What about energy? They said that's already built. Gary did that actually. No, it's not built in. I, I disagree with that. I, I don't think we've seen the economics of of the business yet from energy to to price that in. I think robots. If you think about wh what what kind of work they dislocate and what they're able to accomplish that really is that's why i'm invested in tesla it's not because of cars it's really about the programming that that's happening of machines and you know like you, we say the $25,000 car i think that's just that's such you know it'll fill the valuation once that's launched and i do think we might have a surprise there with when it's revealed and when it goes into production and how quickly it goes into production. But obviously Je Jeff can speak, you know, uh, to that and say, if I'm talking out of my butt, but uh, you know, cause he uses terms like bake off. I was like, wait, what did he just say? The, the suppliers are <laughs> have a bake off, but you ever you know, been to a bake off <laughs> where people compete, like they're baking something and like, yeah, here, try I haven't out. been, but, but I, I want to, you should um, go to a bake but, off. Yeah, I think FSD 12 is, uh, I don't think the market is going to have any idea what to do with that. Who knows that what that actually means, that it's, you know, 300,000 lines of code to 3,000 yeah. and that it's programmed by AI. They don't understand the implications of that. So I think that is a really long tail of people uh, understanding just how good it is to adopt it. So, uh, so yeah, I, I just... I think the bots and FSD ultimately is where it's at. The, the brain inside of that robot is the real innovation in the company. And if like I've been thinking about, oh, maybe I should diversify a little bit. How long do I want to wait? I feel like I heard somebody say, we picked the wrong stock, a prominent you know person in the community. And I'm like, well, why did you pick it? Did you pick it for short-term gains or are you like looking for certainty in the long time horizon? So, you know, with this question 
I really think it, it needs more clarity. But if we're saying in the long term, it's absolutely bots. Bots are going to take a long time to, to play out. It's going to be one of the things where does the market, and I think this is the fundamental conversation, which is when I say bots, long time to play, I mean at scale, like at a meaningful scale. The question is, and this is where people I think get caught up is when the company's in these weird transitions where you overshoot, undershoot earnings and like sentiment's poor. Sentiment's still poor on the stock. And this is where the major dislocations occur of like, you know, the, is the market now going to be forward looking? What if they have an average P and D on January 3rd or 4th? What if earnings are just okay? Is the market in look ahead mode now because of everything else and all these other catalysts? Or is the market still in, I'm going to kill you on your quarterly earnings and I'm going to kill you. If Elon's not in a good mood, I'm going to kill the stock 10, 15%. So that, I think that is going to be really telling at some point, And this is where I keep arguing about 2024. Once we're in 2024, people are going to be looking ahead already to the back half of 2024 to 2025. And, and as Alexander said, like, you know, it's this is where things are going to start coming together. She said 2026, but there's going to be a lot of stuff in 2025. Like you're going to be on the precipice of a, of a number of different things. So that's but the thing Elon that it, it's hard to I just think- understand. It's like, what when do people start looking ahead and have more positive sentiment versus dwelling on where, you know, there, I see surveys. What if Tesla's 5,000 cars under 1.8, what's going to happen? Like it should be nothing. I'm actually looking for three very specific things in the earnings call this time. First free cash flow, of course, because I think this may be razor thin and Mark is not going to like that. And obviously uh, auto gross margin. Second is CapEx expenditure, what they guide. Because if we now suddenly have India, remember, that's supposed to happen in January. Mexico, that's just happening now. Elon's flying back to Italy. Maybe there's something in the books in Italy other than whatever friendship. And so we could have quite a lot of factory building at the same time that we're still investing millions, if not billions, into Dojo, right? So I want to see that CapEx guidance that's currently still between 7 and $9 billion, And I just don't think that's going to be enough. So let's wait for 2024 and 2025 CapEx guidance. So those are the things I think that will be, you know, at the same time, relevant. The short time free cash flow, is there still money adding to these $26 billion that are lying around? And at the same time, this longer vision on CapEx expenditure, because we're at such a crucial moment where... The current business has to finance this huge expansion into three, four, five different business lines. And it, I, I, nobody else could do what's happening, right? Nobody else could do. And I know we're going to pull up a slide later on, or maybe Herbert wants to pull it up now, where I found this new AI robotics recruitment page on, on the Tesla website. And there was a real nice nugget in there because it says making dojo accessible to the masses, right? Was that the word, Herbert, remember? Mm-hmm. On the bottom mm-hmm. of the first page? I don't know mm-hmm. whether you can find it. I'm, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. Keep talking. Keep, keep on working. Keep on talking. <laughs> keep talking. <laughs> because I, I think what nobody waits for and what could be our AWS moment is none of the lines I currently uh, explained, but that people will use dojo renting dojo space because it will be the best ai filter calculator i don't know how this really all works but that this will be the basis for them to host their ai relevant software on it now can i add to that really quick sure i was just gonna say we were sitting there saying it's 2022 2023 where is elon and i think it's been this ai ai competition I mean, Larry Page just said they, that, I mean, Grok, the, the, they wanted more uh, GPUs for Grok. They don't, they, <laughs> the demand is just there, but I think you're right. It's a competition because I think what you're saying, Elon did state at one point they could lease Dojo. So tying that all together, 100%, I look forward to seeing this. So, yeah, Alexandra is one of the best. She is following the career pages and she tells you how many people this was hiring for the, do, the the dojo and the robot. And then one of the things she noticed was on the career page in Tesla, they've now combined AI, robotics, and dojo and autonomy all in one page. And then in the dojo system section of the career page, there's this wonderful line here. It says, design a public-facing API that will bring dojo to the masses. So this is Johnny 
pointed it out. Dojo's a service confirmed. Um, yeah, that's a, another billion dollar business.